For the given function and point, find the unit vectors that give the direction of steepest ascent and steepest descent. Then find a vector that points in the direction of no change in the function. Now here we have the function f of x, y is equal to 2 times sine of 2x minus 3y, and we have a point 0 pi. So, the first thing that we need to do is find the gradient at this given point. So in order to find the gradient at our given point, we need the partial derivatives. So we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to x. Now keeping in mind that we are differentiating with respect to x, we are going to treat y like a constant. So this is going to leave us with 2 multiplied by cosine of 2x minus 3y multiplied by the derivative of the argument with respect to x, so that's multiplied by 2. And we can rewrite this, that's 4 cosine of 2x minus 3y. Now, very similarly, we want to go ahead and find the partial derivative of this function with respect to y. So since we are differentiating with respect to y, we will treat x like a constant here. So we have 2 multiplied by cosine of 2x minus 3y, multiplied by the derivative of the argument with respect to y, which is negative 3. So we are left here with negative 6 cosine of 2x minus 3y. So we're now ready to evaluate these partial derivatives at the point. So we have the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at the ordered pair, 0 pi. We have 4 multiplied by cosine of 2 times 0 minus 3 pi. So 4 times cosine of minus 3 pi is going to leave us, or we know that cosine of minus 3 pi is negative 1. So we are left here with negative 4. And now evaluating the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the ordered pair 0 pi, we have negative 6. Now, again, if we look back up at our partial derivatives here, they both contain cosine of 2x minus 3y, which we just found is equal to negative 1. So we have 6 multiplied by negative 1, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 6. So therefore, the gradient of the function at the ordered pair 0 pi is the vector defined by the components minus 4, 6. And notice we have a scalar multiple here of 2, so we can rewrite this as 2 times the vector with components negative 2, 3. So this is the first part that we need in order to find the unit vectors pointing in the direction of steepest ascent and steepest descent. So in order, to, again, to find those unit vectors, we want to take our gradient vector and find the magnitude. So we have the magnitude of the gradient vector at the point 0 pi. So using the length of a scalar multiple property, we can keep our scalar multiple 2 out in front and multiply this by the distance formula. So we have the square root of negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. And we know that negative 2, of course, negative 2 squared goes to 4, 3 squared goes to 9. So this leaves us with 2 times the square root of 13. Now, we'll make one final observation here. Since this is a length, we can conclude that the length or the magnitude of the gradient vector at the ordered pair 0 pi is equivalent to the length of the negative gradient evaluated at the ordered pair 0 pi. So both of these lengths are defined as 2 square root of 13. So now we have everything that we need, and we're ready to find the unit vectors pointing in the direction of steepest ascent and descent. So let's start here 
with our steepest ascent. So a unit vector pointing in the direction of steepest ascent, say is a some vector u, defined by the gradient vector, the positive gradient vector at the ordered pair, 0 pi, by the magnitude of this vector. And plugging in what we just found, this is going to be 2 multiplied by the vector with components negative 2, 3, all divided by the magnitude, which is 2 times the square root of 13. And we can simplify these 2s, cancel each other right out, leaving us with a beautiful final answer of 1 over the square root of 13 multiplied by the vector negative 2, 3. So this is our solution for the unit vector pointing in the direction of steepest ascent. So then to find the unit vector pointing in the direction of steepest descent, all we need to do is add a negative. So say this vector v a unit vector pointing in the direction of steepest descent is minus what we found above. So we just add a negative. So this is equal to minus 1 over the square root of 13 multiplied by the vector with the components negative 2, 3. So these are our two beautiful final answers to part A. So now that we have found these unit vectors, we are ready to now find a vector that points in the direction of no change. So for part B, let's begin by recalling that the gradient vector at some point a b is orthogonal or normal to the vector whose components are defined as minus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point a b the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point a b so we're going to use this and the gradient vector that we've already found to find a vector pointing in the direction of no change. So again, we just found that the gradient vector at the ordered pair 0 pi is defined as 2 multiplied by the vector with components negative 2, 3. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore the scalar multiple in the front and go ahead here and Think about negative 2 as the partial derivative with respect to x, and think about 3 as the partial derivative with respect to y. So using those components, we can define some vector, we'll call it w, as the vector with the components minus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y, partial derivative of the function with respect to x, and plugging in what we defined above, we have the vector minus 3, negative 2. And so this is our beautiful final answer. This is a vector pointing in the direction where the function has no change. Now, any scalar multiple of this vector w will work. But before we state that this is really officially our final answer, we should check. We want to make sure that the dot product of the gradient vector and this vector w is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and check. We have two multiplied by the vector negative two, three, and we're dotting this with the vector minus three, minus two. So again, ignoring that scalar multiple in the front, we have negative two times negative three to give us positive six, plus three times negative two, which leaves us with minus six. Woohoo! This equals zero. So this confirms that, yes, this is a vector pointing in the direction of no change.